This is Codenames Pictures. Your goal is to be the first team that can find all of your secret agents. The pictures will give you the coordinates you need to find your secret agents. Each team will have a spy master. That spy master will give your team clues to find your secret agents. The double agent goes on to the team that starts. This clue card will give you the color on the sides is the team who starts. Each team will have seven secret agents. That team will then have an additional secret agent that they have to meet up with. You'll also have four innocent bystanders that if you happen to guess, don't trigger anything at all. The assassin, which will end the game immediately, and of course, a ton of pictures to make variability and increase replayability over and over again. And then you have a ton of coded cards as well. But let me show you what a setup would look like. First, you'll set up all of the cards. And separate everybody into two teams. You want to have at least two teams of two. That way each team has a spy master and each person, each team has a field operative. Once the cards are set up and the teams are chosen, you'll give them their secret agents trying to meet up with, plus the double agent on the team that starts, which this card, clue card will show you, is the blue team. So the blue team will get the double agent, and they have one additional, they have eight secret agents they have to meet up, or red team goes second, has to meet up with seven. So there'll be eight blue squares, seven red, the assassin, and the four innocent bystanders. If you ever guess the assassin, that team is immediately eliminated. So the spy master will give one number and one word. The number will represent the cards, number of cards the clue represents, and the word will depict something on the card. So for example, you can be really straightforward and say robot one. But what you want to try to do is use a clue that represents more than one card. For example, if you want to say plant three, well, this one kind of has some leaves. This one has some plants down the bottom, and this one is a tree. Once the clue has been given, the team has to try to figure out which card they're talking about. So they'll talk amongst themselves, and the way you signify your guess, because you can say anything you want, once you have an answer, you touch that card. Whoever is the current spy master will take the appropriate card and agent and place it on that card. So this is where the team can get themselves in trouble. Because if they just wild the guess, or if the spy master doesn't give a good enough clue, you could end up guessing the location of a, a secret agent from the other team. So whatever number is given, so let's say the number was three, three plants, then the team that's guessing has up to four guesses. The benefit of the fourth one is you may be able to go back to previous clues that you that you missed or were incorrect on. So the team will continue guessing as many times as they want, but remember wild guesses are dangerous because that assassin can be lurking in any one of the locations and you don't know which one it is. So guess well, but guess appropriately. And of course, if an innocent bystander is guessed the location of that, that doesn't do anything except trigger the end of that team's turn. So if I had the three guesses or four guesses and I triggered, and I guess this location, well, that ends my turn. Same thing happens if I guess an opponent's location. So then we'll go to the opponent's turn, and that spy master then comes up with a number and a word to give their team in order to get them to guess their colors, their secret agents' locations. One important aspect for the spy master is a spy master must keep a straight face. They're not allowed to giggle or smirk or roll their eyes or shake their head or anything like that when their team is trying to guess their answers. So that is crucial and brutally important. And sometimes the spy master just has to close their eyes or turn their head or do something else because it's so hard because you want to so badly give your team that extra information or you sometimes just want to scoff at the connections they make. One rule that's great to play by is if you're not sure if the word is just a single word, because uh, hyphens aren't allowed, what you can do 
is ask your opponent's spy master. Obviously, whisper in their ear and don't say it so your team or the other team can hear. But ask your other spy master. If they're okay with it, then you're allowed to do it. And vice versa. And so that's a great way to solve those kind of, well, I don't know if this word would apply or if this is really one word or if this word's allowed. So use your other spy master as a resource for those kind of questions. There is a two player and a three player variant inside the rule book as well. And I'll leave that to discover for yourself. Thank you so much. And I hope you're able to disconnect and reconnect with your family and friends again soon.